Hello my friend, welcome back to another video. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I appreciate you being here. If you're a subscriber of mine already, I thank you for joining me again. It's truly appreciated. So let's go back to the beginning. We are going to go through a series of videos over the next few weeks that explore the original forms of acrylic pouring. Um, we got to erase, if you're a new pourer, if you are new to pouring, I should say, uh, and have been doing it less than a year, then I need you to kind of clear your mind of everything you learned and go back to the beginning with me. So to start it off, we all know acrylic pouring is taking an acrylic paint of any brand and turning, turning it into a fluid form by adding something to it. Now this is where it gets tricky for people. There are countless recipes that you can use and what determines the recipe that you're going to be using is A, the technique that you're doing and B, the kind of effects that you wanna see in your acrylic pour. So to start off, let me just say, there are multiple mediums you can do this with, including just water. You can take your acrylic paint, thin it down with some water and pour it onto a canvas. Or you can make what's known as a pouring medium. Now an actual, um, a, an actual store-bought pouring medium, something like a Liquitex pouring medium. This is what was intended to use with acrylic paint to achieve an acrylic pour painting. But through testing and experimentation, artists have figured out other mediums that you can use to do the same exact thing. Except some of these combined together may have a different result than using a pouring medium. So the first thing I wanna do is tell you about some of many different items that you can use to make a homemade type of pouring medium. If you don't want to buy Liquitex, okay? The first thing that you can do, like I said, is water. The only thing with water is paint have a threshold when it comes to adding water to them. At some point, if you add too much water, it will break down the paint, the tension in the paint, and what that can cause is it can cause your paint to flake off the canvas. You know, after a few months when it's dry, um, it could dull out the colors. So if you're trying to do this with only water, you need to really use a more expensive type of paint that has a lot of pigment in it. And each paint company will tell you what their threshold is for water. You can find that out through a simple Google search, but the average is between 30 to 50%. 50% uh, 50 would be extremely high for a deco art. You wouldn't want to do that, but something like a golden heavy body paint would hold that much water. The thing is with using just paint and water, you're not going to get any cells except for if you're doing something like the Dutch pour and you're using a paint that has a base in it that likes to create cells. Like if you use an Amsterdam white, something with their paint base, it, it will produce great cells for you if you use just water. But if you use something like Deco Art with just water, you're not going to get cells. Okay. So let's go over the different pouring mediums that you can make. Now I'm gonna give you ratios and all that. I do, however, 
have a video that I'm going to link in the description where I did do six different recipes with actual mixing instructions and measurements in that video. Right now, I'm just going to give you some examples of items you can add together to make your own pouring medium. So a little, little, let me go back a little bit. Golden GAC 800. Not a lot of people know this. This was Golden's pouring medium at one time. Now they have Golden. It's a, it says Golden on it and it says color pouring medium or something like that on the bottle. But way back when they had horrible branding and they released this GAC 800, which we use now in the pouring world. We'll add a little squirt into our paints to avoid cracking. But it was the original pouring medium for golden colors that prevented low crazing. Not a lot of people know that. It was a really, really bad marketing job they did when it first came out. We're talking years ago when pouring wasn't a really big thing back then. But this was Golden's original pouring medium. Now they have their own, you know, a different jar and they reserved this to use in pouring to reduce crazing. But you can use this as a pouring medium all on its own if you wanted to. Very expensive. If this bottle was like 30 bucks, so very expensive. I wouldn't suggest it, but you could if you wanted to. Another thing now, when it comes to pouring mediums, there's tons of different brands, actual pouring mediums. You have Artist Loft. You have Vallejo has a thick pouring medium. Now, what's the difference between a thick and a regular? You would want to use a thicker pouring medium for something like a ring pour where you want to hold definition, right? Um, Color Pour has a pouring medium. There are a ton of pouring mediums. But there are other things, if you cannot find an actual pouring medium, that you can mix together, as I said. So the first and cheapest one would be glue and water. And that's it. What is the ratio? 70% glue, 30% water. So what you can do if you buy any size bottle of, of glue all, you want to dump out one third of the bottle, fill it up with water, shake it, your pouring medium's all done. Add it to your colors. If you want to have just a nice composition with no cells, don't add anything to it, just the glue and the water. If you're looking for cells, you're going to have to use a silicone oil in your colors. Something like a Vallejo or there's treadmill belt, you can use WD-40 silicone brand. Uh, I've used KY personal lubricant that was 100% dimethicone. That's another one that makes great cells. There's tons of silicone spray products out there, even hair serums. So, but if you wanted to get cells using glue and water, you'd have to use something like a silicone oil. Now, another thing you can do to make a pouring medium would be to use Floetrol. You can use just good old American Floetrol mixed with your paints. The ratio, again, I, I'm going to put that video down below because for different pours, you want different thicknesses. Right now, we're going to concentrate on the original one technique acrylic pour that I'm going to be doing, but um, you can use just flow trawl and water in your paints. You can use just flow trawl, no water, depending on how thick you want them. And then <laughs> you can combine everything. There's people that like to use flow trawl because it creates cells. They like to use a gloss medium and varnish because the paints dry a little bit glossy. They'll also kick in some glue because glue works as a really good binder, right? So they'll kick in a little bit of glue and then some water. So my point being is you have to figure out 
how pricey you want this to be. That's what it comes down to. Are you a glue and water type of person because that's what your budget allows for? If so, look for videos where artists use glue and water for their pouring medium. Um, do you want to do a pour, a Dutch pour that has a lot of cells? And the best way to go about that is with the flow trough. Again, though, if you use better, better uh, quality paints and use just water in them, they'll produce some cells, not a lot, some. Um, you have to decide on what type of products you want to buy. The best way to learn how all these different mediums work together is to watch a lot of different videos. Now, through this series, I'm going to attempt to use a different pouring medium for every recipe, uh, for every technique so that you can see how they all perform differently. Um, I'm going to use silicone in some, some I'm not, and I, when I get to those videos, I will explain why. But the, the key is, is to really do your research. Find out what you want to, to achieve in your painting. If you don't want to have to varnish it or resin it, then you need to add in something like a gloss medium and varnish that dries with some shine. Huge tip right here. This pouring medium by Artist Loft is the shiniest result I have ever seen. It literally looks like there's three coats of varnish on your painting when you're done using this. So, I mean, it, it all depends on what you want to use. Me personally, okay, for all of the techniques I do, I like to use uh, Floetrol. If I were to use anything other than Floetrol and water, I would use a pouring medium. Like, let's say I wanted to do a ring pour. I would probably choose this thick pouring medium by Vallejo. If I wanted to do uh, a flip cup, again, you can use just the flow trial. You can use just the glue and water. They're very versatile. They all work. So figure out what you want. Figure out what products you want to have to buy or use and uh, go from there. Each artist has their own different way. And that's what's really confusing. Not everybody does this differently, but that's the name of the game. That's why you have to watch a lot of videos and, and kind of teach yourself, hey, artist A is using some GAC, she's using Floetrol, and she's using this. I like the way her paintings come out. I'm going to try that recipe. Well, artist B is now only using this, so that's where the confusion can come in. But just know that using any of these products either on their own or combined together will achieve a beautiful painting. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up to mix up my pouring medium with you with the colors, obviously. And I'm going to show you the consistency that you need to do the, the type of pour that I am going to do next. So I am going to show you how to do your basic flip cup today using glue and water for my pouring medium. So you have choices for the glue. The two best would be glue wall or an actual PVA glue. That's what this one here is here. I have both in my Amazon shop under a can of mediums, mediums for pouring. Or acrylic pouring um this is actually a book binding glue but it's a pure pva glue so it works beautiful and then glue all has pva properties to it also but it's not a full pva glue as this one is so when you want to make your pouring medium out of glue and water you're going to put 70 percent glue 30 percent water that simple so we'll fill up no matter what size the cup is just 
figure out where about 70% is. It's probably not quite accurate, but it's close enough. Uh, figure out where it's about 70% full would be, and then fill it up the rest of the way with water. That's simple. Mix it together, and you're done. Okay? So we're going to just... Fill it up. I like to leave a little room at the top of the cup to stir. And now we're going to put our water in until we fill that line or reach that line. That's it. Mix the two together. And your medium is done. Give it a good mix. Nice and slow. And then there's your pouring medium. If you would like to see how thick that actually is, I'll put some on a piece of paper. Maybe a little bit more. So this way you can kind of judge what the consistency of it should be. Okay. So that's the consistency of it. And if you want to look at this at a different angle, an even easier angle, you could always get yourself a pouring medium, okay, and put some in a cup to see what the consistency is like. This would be a better um, choice, just a regular pouring medium, not a thick pouring medium. Put some of this in a cup so you can see what it looks like. Put some glue in your cup and add water to it until it gets like this consistency. That would be the easiest way. Then you don't even have to measure. You could just put a bunch of glue in a cup and add water and get it right to here, which I will show you the consistency of this also, just for reference. And you know what I'll actually do? I'll actually do a side-by-side -side flip cup for you so you can see the difference between using the two different products. So you can see that's uh, pretty fluid. If you want, I'll even put it on a piece of paper. So here they are, side by side, glue and pouring medium. You see they're running together there. Okay, so it's, it's approximately the same as the pouring medium. And now what we will do is I will mix up one color with you in each medium. But just know that the rest of the colors I'm using were mixed exactly the same. All right, first thing we need to do is to make our base coat. So you decide whatever color you want to use. You can use any color. I'm going with classic white, okay? So what you want to do is put one part paint, meaning however much paint you're going to put in, means what I'm trying to say is we're going to do one part paint two parts medium pouring medium or glue and water pouring medium um, what constant what that means when people say one part to two parts it means however much paint you put in the cup you're now going to add twice as much of the glue and water mixture so that's one part paint two parts glue and water homemade pouring medium same thing over here now this is where this becomes tricky you can into this you can use this much white paint put a little dash of pouring medium in it 
not the two parts, just a little dash of it, and then thin it the way the rest of the way with water. But remember what I said, if you're using cheaper paints, this is a cheaper paint, the threshold for the water, you have to be careful. So that's why I like to add more pouring medium to thin it out even further so that two parts this way when I go to add my water I don't have to add that much water in there because it's already almost thin enough so let's give this a whirl this one and this probably is thin enough no water was needed to this one for this one it flows off the stick this is actually a perfect consistency for a flip cup and I'm going to show you that on the paper because people whoops <laughs> Got a little tag along there. People tend to like that paper test because it just shows what the consistency is like. Now this one here is also perfect. Okay, so I don't have to add water to either of those colors. But now what happens if for my colors, I want to use that... Uh, a paint like deco art with this here heavy body this is really thick paint if I put a, a little bit of this paint in this cup with some of this uh, glue mixture you're gonna have to add water but with a paint like this you're not gonna have to so the the consistencies of the paints themselves matter also is what I'm trying to say um, if you're new, maybe try sticking to all one brand paint so that you can get used to it and get used to how things work as far as how much you have to add of what. But, you know, when you get more experienced, then you can start adding in things like this, like the thicker body paints, more expensive paints, and you'll know, hey, it's not as thick as, the, it's not as thin as this one, so now I gotta add some water. Maybe that will help you, I'm not sure. But I'm going to pick out a couple of colors here. What the heck? We'll go with the fluorescent orange by Golden. Another thing you're going to have to learn is transparencies. Um, hopefully, you know, through this, this base spec basic series, I'll be able to teach all of it. Um, but... Different paints have different transparencies. For example, this here, I'll show you up close. This fluorescent orange. See how you can see the lines through it? That's because it's a transparent paint. So what if you were to use this in a pore and this color was on top of say a purple? You're gonna see the purple through the orange and it's gonna look like mud, okay? Um, this here, this Prussian blue, see how the line is solid? That means that it's an opaque paint. And it'll tell you too on the back here. Um, I'm not sure if the Deco Art does that. Usually it's the better brand paints that let you know if it's a transparent or a um, opaque paint. But what you can do is you can stick a stick into your bottle and kind of, or even paint it on a piece of paper. If you can see the paper through the paint, that means it's going to be a transparent color. But that's for another lesson. Right now we're going to do that orange. And then on the other uh, pouring medium side, I'm going to mix up this ultramarine blue red shade. Now this is a soft body acrylic which means it's a little thinner and creamier then the heavy body. So I'm gonna just put some in there. Also, the, the better quality the pigments are, the less you have to use because they're more pigmented. Because you are adding in a product that has, um, especially when you use Floetrol, Floetrol can dull colors. So if you're using a, a less expensive type of paint like this, it's not gonna have the pigment in it that this golden does this is two dollars bottle this is twelve dollars i believe or no maybe this was nine so there's a huge difference in price but there's a lot more pigment in there 
Now for this here, I would have used a half a cup of paint. That I used not even a teaspoon of paint. So now into the cup, I put about a teaspoon of paint. I'm going to add in two teaspoons of my pouring medium. If you want to add, well, the glue and water pouring medium that I made. You can give it a mix. It's going to be too thick. You can add a little bit more in there if you want, or now you can start thinning with water. If I can get away with not using water in my paintings, then I'm going to. I'd much rather, there's already water in this. Um, I'd much rather do that, but sometimes it's unavoidable. And I haven't forgotten about the whites on the paper. I'm just going to put it all on there. So this next one now, pouring medium. There's, a, again, a, not even a teaspoon of paint. This, because it is so pigmented, I can add an ounce of that pouring medium in there. And it will be very vibrant still. A lot, I have to be honest though, a lot of people that do pouring don't use product the way I'm using right now. They'll use a thicker paint that's a better quality um, so that they can use less of this and more water than using something like this soft body paint. I mean, you saw how much pouring medium I had to use, but... Again, it's all based on what you can afford to spend. If you want to do it the cheapest way possible, glue and water is the way to go. I feel like using just water with paints, it's just, you're not going to be able to get decent results. The only technique that I see that's decent with just water is the Dutch pour. That's the only one. All right, so I have those two mixed up. Let me show you these on paper. You want them to be a little bit on the thicker side so that they hold their shape, the, the cells that we're going to get. I'll show you them on paper. So here are the two whites. See how they're running at the same, same rate of speed? That's what you want. And the colors are the same exact consistency as these. So I won't bother doing those. So, really quick, funny story. <laughs> I'm here mixing up the rest of my colors for the video. And I said, why is that orange so light? It should be brighter. So I had to stop the video, go back and rewind to see what I did. I picked up the cup that said glue and water. That I put the white paint into and added it to my orange. So I know a lot of you probably saw that too. So please excuse the hot mess that I am. <laughs> it's a little lighter, but it has glue and water and white in it apparently now. <laughs> so let's continue on. Okay, so on one side of the deck, we have various colors and brands mixed with our glue and water mixture. And on the other side of the deck, we have various brands and colors mixed with straight artist loft pouring medium. In the back, we have the white with the pouring medium and the white over here with the glue all in water. Um, and what I thought I would do is two separate split cups, one using my trusty old friend here, KY True Feel, personal, no, premium intimate lubricant. The important ingredient, I'm not sure if it says it on here or in the box or if you'll even be able to read it at this point. Um, somewhere on here it says 100% dimethicone. Not all KY uh, lubricants are 100% dimethicone. This one is though. So I'll try to remember to put it in my Amazon shop. But you can get it at CVS, Stop and Shop, whatever uh, grocery store you have uh, or drugstore. Okay. 
And then on the other side here, we're going to try this Vallejo silicone oil because I've never tried it and I want to try it. So how do you do a flip cup? What you want to do is you want to put your colors in a cup in the dirty, poor fashion, or you can layer them. What's a dirty pour? Dirty pour is when you just pour colors into each other. You would start with the orange, pour some in. Then you would go to the magenta and pour it on top of the orange. And they all kind of churn in the cup. And then you flip it over and pour it. Or you can do the layered approach, which is what I'm going to do. But the first thing we need to do before we fill our cup is put the silicone in. So what we need to do here is we need to put a drop or two of silicone in all the colors except for the metallics. Why not the metallics? I personally feel, and this is just my opinion and my experience, trust me, I've been doing it long enough, that metallics do not act right when they have either silicone in them or a lot of water. Like if you mix up a metallic paint and you go to add water into it, you'll notice the particles of mica trying to flutter away from the water. And although you mix it back in, sometimes when your painting dries, it looks grainy or it's broken apart. Mica doesn't like water or silicone in my opinion. So that's why I add it to all the colors that are not metallic, okay? And then over here, the same exact thing. So, Right here, the KY, I'm going to add two drops, the magenta, two drops, the dioxazine purple, not that one, that one was a metallic, I believe, ultramarine blue, deep blue green, and that's it, okay? That was a peacock feather, I believe, by Deco Art. Over on this side, again, two drops in the magenta, two drops in the deep violet, two drops in the Prussian blue. That is a metallic, two drops in the lime green two drops in the ultramarine blue. Now, next thing you wanna ask yourself is, do I want big cells or do I want tiny small cells or do I want a combination of both? Well, if you want big cells, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten 10. 10 stirs, just mix it in a little bit like this and that's it. If you want little cells, really, really beat it in good. Or you can do a combination of both. That one didn't have any. So just a couple mixes, because I like them big. I like them to come out with lots of color in them and open up and all that jazz. So just give them a whirl a few times and then you're good to go so for the first cup I'm gonna do it on screen with you so you can see how I layer my colors and then for the second one I'm going to do it on screen but in time lapse to save a little time so this is the glue and water mixture I'm gonna start off with a little bit of white I'm gonna pour right down the side of my cup just like so I'm going to save that gold for somewhere other next to them to the white. No particular reason. I just don't want the white to dull it. And then I'm just going to pour the colors in just like this. Separated every once in a while by some white. Uh, you can separate every layer. If you want it to have a lot of white in it, separate it by every, uh, with... In between every layer of paint, you could put some white or 
do a couple of colors like I do and then add the white. It's all personal preference. What colors work good together? Get yourself a color wheel or go on to Pinterest and type in color palette ideas. You'll be surprised at all of the different color schemes there are that go together like odd colors you would never think would go together good. Go on there, that's a huge help. So now I've added my colors into that cup. You can either keep going and add a little bit more or you can uh, stop right there. Again, depends on their canvas. These are five ounces, which will be plenty to cover this canvas. So I would say 10 ounces for a canvas that's 12 by 16. Um, you can add just a little more orange and magenta into this. And then on top of that magenta, I'm gonna add this blue to make a pretty different shade of purple. You could also combine your colors or add them together in the cup next to each other so they make a secondary color, okay? So that's how you layer the cup. So now it's time to flip the cup. There's two different ways you can do this. If you're doing just one cup full of paint and you're not doing an experiment like I am, you have one big cup of paint that you're gonna flip onto this canvas. What you can do is hold the cup on the bottom, take your canvas, um, put it on top of the paint like so, hold it and then come over like this. You should have room when you do it though, unlike me right now with all these cups everywhere. <laughs> okay, so now it's there. Another way to do, and this may be, let's try it with the spreader. I've never done this with a spreader before, so. Oh boy, wish me luck. I, I can feel it coming already. Okay, okay. Keep pressure so it doesn't come. <laughs> We're going to leave it right there. All right. What you want to do is go forward with your cup a little bit, slide it forward, and then pull it back. Just like so. Kind of slowly drag it along. And this may be too much paint for this whole, this canvas, but... We'll go with it. Now, we have this other guy here that we're gonna slide off of the, the scraper onto the canvas. And we're going to go forward again and then pull back, just like so. Good. Blend those up into each other. Okay. Now, what you wanna do is you can go ahead and torch your paint. You're going to get all the silicone oil rising to the top. Here, let me zoom you in for that. That's always a pretty sight. There we go. We'll do this area right here. The heat from the torch helps to bring the silicone up to the surface. And what it's, is happening is the oil and the water in the paint are rejecting each other, expo exposing all of those beautiful colors underneath. Absolutely magnificent. I put the flash on for you, just so you can really see them. This area is really, really sexy in here. I like this. And then you go over to the glue and water side and you know, you got some action going on there. We still have to tilt. So there is that. Now 
Yeah. I like it a lot. All right, so tilting now. We still have to put a little bit of white paint on that other side. It doesn't have to be white. You can use any of your leftover colors that you may have. I just have some of the white left over, so that's why I'm doing that. These paints, you can store them. They will last months. So if you have any leftovers, one tip I have for you for leftovers, if you don't have containers, you can take your dirty rubber glove, let it dry off, and then here's some white paint. I have in a cylinder thingy. Just put it over the top, and now it's sealed off. If you use saran wrap and a uh, um, elastic, I'm just going to use my finger and kind of spread this out a little bit. Just like so, just to give it a little aid. You want it to be able to flow around the canvas. And now you want to start your tilt. Just do that. Look for the spot you like the most. For me, it's this side. And try to save that the best you can. It's very, very hard to get used to tilting. Go really, really slow. Come back up. And you know, the color palette is not going to look great on this one because I was experimenting, but it is what it is. So you just take your time and tilt around, get it to a uh, composition that you're pleased with. Try not to wreck your cells like I just did. It's very easy to do that by tilting too fast like I am. But for the sake of the video, unfortunately, you guys don't want to be here for an hour with me while I'm tilting around. So I'm just tilting it all off. <laughs> Not taking my time whatsoever. Totally ruined it, but it's okay. You saw the cells. You saw what you can do, what can be done with it. Um, let me show you one other thing that you can do. There's this thing called a ribbon. And what you can do is take one of your cups, doesn't matter that you had your uh, colors in. And let's see, let's do some pretty ribbons. A bunch of cells will continue to pop out here. I want to do my ribbons first though. Um, let me dump some of this muddy paint out so it doesn't get involved with our pour, our ribbon, I should say. So there's some blue, more blue, purple, Magenta, get a little bit of white here. That's the wrong white because this is the glue side. Oh, no more white. Okay. Well, what you can do is you can take your colors and rib them, ribbon them through. <laughs> 
And now you watch this. You get all the pretty cells coming back again. You have a lot of silicone oil on the top here, which by the way, I'm going to link down below a video that shows you how to clean this off before you resin or varnish it. So you can do a little rip, pretty ribbon like that. You can take your straight gold and kind of go through there also if you want to. Have fun with it. That That's the main idea is to have fun. Okay, that's the main idea. <laughs> we just want to have fun with it and relax and forget all of our problems for a little bit. Okay. You can also do straight pour right on top. Just pour it right in there. Some bright blue on top of that. These are all the glue colors I'm using, by the way. And then you can swipe it out. You can swipe out areas. You don't have to stick to the same technique throughout the whole thing. Okay? You just do whatever you want. And enjoy yourself. So my friends, that is the end of this demonstration. I feel like one of those people at the fair that's showing you all the fancy chopping knives. <laughs> I'll give you a close-up of my not-so-masterpiece. And uh, I hope this video was helpful. I'm going to go through all the techniques. It was for flip cup this time. Next time it may be the uh, uh, dirty pour, straight pour. We'll see. We'll see where life takes us. Key is you have some pretty colors, some pretty cells, and you know how to do a flip cup now. So if you enjoyed the, the tutorial, one that I ruined, I, I tilted off that entire beautiful area. That is so sad, but again, I don't have time to sit here with you guys and stretch for 40 minutes because you go really slow. You should be really tilting slow when you're doing this, uh, trying to avoid doing what I just did. And you know, another thing is, is nobody can teach you how to tilt. You have to practice that. That is a learned, um, technique. You, you have to do it and fail and Figure out which way you're tilting that's going wrong. The only way you're going to better yourself at that is to do it. But anyways, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please click like. If you aren't subscribed, please consider doing so. I have a Facebook group, United We Pour Fluid Art Group. Uh, the link is in the description. Along with all the codes to all the products that I use, that I have a discount for, and my Amazon shop where you can find a lot of these supplies, including that KY um, lubricant for the silicone. I hope you all had a great New Year's and happy pouring.